what we were talking about is when I notice that moment that I notice that I'm thinking and I realize there might be a feeling or emotion attached to my thoughts. I do my best to have self-compassion in that moment, especially if I'm feeling fear or anger or sadness. And so we are talking about the practice of give and take or tongling, where you actually breathe in and take in the emotion and breathe out self-compassion. And that helps me get to my heart practice and out of my mind, which it's normal for me to think and it's okay for me to think and have thoughts. And I can bring self-compassion to those thoughts and emotions that arise. So I'll invite you to close your eyes or have a slightly downward gaze. And take a few deep breaths. And bring to mind a difficult situation that occurred in the last few days or week. Somewhere with an interaction with a person or on the road or at work where you may have felt angry and know that other people in the world and on this planet are experiencing a similar situation and feeling angry. And on your next in-breath, breathe in the anger. And on your next out-breath, breathe out self-compassion. Breathe in the anger. Breathe out self-compassion. Breathe in the anger. And breathe out self-compassion. Now notice any fear that may be underlying this anger and breathe in the fear and breathe out self-compassion. Breathe in the fear and breathe out self-compassion. Breathe in the fear and breathe out self-compassion. Now notice any sadness that may have occurred around this event and know that others are experiencing the same sadness and breathe in the sadness 
and breathe out self-compassion. Breathe in the sadness and breathe out self-compassion. Breathe in the sadness and breathe out self-compassion. And as you are able, notice any hope that you may have for you and the situation that occurred. And breathe in the hope and breathe out love. Breathe in the hope and breathe out love. Breathe in the hope and breathe out love. And in the last few moments of this meditation, take a few more deep breaths. And when you're ready, come back to the room and open your eyes. So that's a long answer to a question that was asked about what can we do when we're really lost in our thoughts and they keep coming back in what Jack Kornfeld, my mentor, calls as reruns. They just keep rerunning and recurring over and over. And the moment that I notice, I do my best to feel happy that I noticed because that's a moment of awakening for me because before I started practicing mindfulness, I never even noticed that I was thinking. I was lost in my thoughts and not able to become aware of that. I had thoughts and I didn't feel like I was ever present when I look back when, when I was like that. And I think we can go ahead and if it's all right with you, Liz, and go ahead and talk about forgiveness, which is what I was going to talk about today. Yes. And I'd like to start <clears throat> the class off today with a reading from The Language of Letting Go by Melody Beatty. And the reading is titled Revenge. No matter how long we've been recovering, no matter how solid our spiritual ground, we may still feel an overwhelming desire at times to punish or get even with another person. We want revenge. We want to see the other person hurt the way he or she has hurt us. We want to see life deal that person just rewards. In fact, we would like to help life out. 
Those are normal feelings, but we do not have to act on them. These feelings are part of our anger, but it's not our job to deal justice. We can allow ourselves to feel the anger. It is helpful to go one step deeper and let ourselves feel the other feelings, the hurt, the pain, the anguish. But our goal is to release the feelings and be finished with them. We can hold the other person accountable. We can hold the other person responsible, but it is not our responsibility to be judge and jury. Actively seeking revenge will not help us. It will block us and hold us back. Walk away. Stop playing the game. Unhook. Learn your lesson. Thank the other person for having taught you something valuable. And be finished with it. Put it behind with the lesson intact. Acceptance helps. So does forgiveness, not the kind that invites that person to use us again, but a forgiveness that releases the other person and sets him or her free to walk a separate path while releasing our anger and resentment. That sets us free to walk our own path. In the quote for today, today I will be as angry as I need to be with the goal of finishing my business with others. Once I have released my hurt and anger, I will strive for healthy forgiveness, forgiveness with boundaries. I understand that boundaries coupled with forgiveness and compassion will move me forward. <clears throat> and what that reading brings to mind is a time when I was feeling a, a lot of emotional pain. My family was falling apart and I didn't have a lot of forgiveness for myself or for other people I was angry at, resentful at. I, At the time, I wasn't in touch with my emotions, so I didn't even know that I was angry. All I knew is that I was feeling a lot of pain. And I didn't know what to do. So I wasn't one to pray. But I started to pray one, and I said a prayer, one of the only prayers that I knew. And one of the lines from that prayer is, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And I would stop on that line and know how important it was for me to forgive myself and ask for forgiveness for the things that I have done and to give forgiveness to those who I felt may have wronged me. And at the time, I came across a quote from Nelson Mandela. And Nelson Mandela, as many of you know, was placed in jail, in prison for decades. And when he was set free, he said, as I walked out the door toward the gate that would lead to my freedom, I knew if I didn't leave my bitterness and hatred behind, I'd still be in prison. And that quote really resonated with me. And I felt it was more important for me to start forgiving. And when I learned a practice of loving kindness and principle-based living, one of the principles I ask for and one of the lines as part of my loving kindness practice is, may I be forgiving. May I be forgiving. And I say this every time I do a loving kindness practice and 
since my accident, I've started every day with a loving kindness practice. And every day I ask, may I be forgiving? Because I know that if I'm not, I'll be stuck in prison, my own prison that I'm putting myself in. And when I entered a parent-driven recovery program and learned about how to help heal and recover from my severe codependency and codependence issues, I learned another quote about resentments. And it's resentments are like taking poison and waiting for the other person to die. And so I also learned that the resentments that I had, I actually learned that I had a lot of resentments that I developed over my lifetime. And I never even realized that I was carrying these resentments, carrying this anger. I didn't think of myself as an angry person. It was showing how emotionally ignorant I was about my own emotions and how angry I, I had been and how much resentment I had and how my anger and resentments harmed other people and myself. And through the recovery program, I learned that I could make amends for the resentments and the harm that I, these resentments have placed on other people. And making amends is an apology plus a change in my behavior. And the main thrust of this talk comes partly from James Barras's book, Awakening Joy. And the chapter he, and the step he talks about is, is forgiveness and blamelessness. And it amazes me or amazed me how similar his chapter was to the recovery principles that I learned in our parent driven recovery program, which was a 12 step program. And it's a, honest, principle-based practice of living and living in integrity and faith and having hope and courage, openness, willingness, perseverance, spirituality, service to others, and accountability. And in his chapter, he talks a lot about living a life of integrity, which I learned is choosing what's right over what's fast, fun, fun or easy, even when no one's looking. So I'll repeat that again, is choosing to do what's right over what's fast, fun or easy, even when no one's looking. And I'll leave you with a, a few passages from his chapter, which may sound familiar to the topic that we've been talking about. And one is when you see clearly that your choices lead to more misery, that's when you're ready to move in a new direction. However, you can't accomplish this by turning against yourself. You have to go gently, recognizing that you are in a process. A wise parent understands the confusion of an angry child. They know that whether the behavior is due to frustration, fatigue, or hunger for attention, 
What the child really needs is to be held in love, for the pain to be understood with compassion. Then the child can begin to calm down in the same way by tenderly holding with kind awareness the pain and confusion that gave rise to our own hurtful behavior. We can begin to transform our suffering into compassion. If you want to be happy, don't intentionally cause suffering to yourself or others. And the practice of give and take that we did earlier today is an example of noticing any anger or fear before the anger and any sadness that may have occurred or that you've felt in giving yourself self-compassion and doing your best to move towards hope and love and away from the anger and any resentments you may have. And we're about to take a break. And at, in the break, I'd like for you to think about a time when you may have hurt someone and you would like forgiveness. In a time when you may have hurt yourself and you would like forgiveness. In a time when someone may have harmed you. And with that, we'll take a three minute break and we'll come back. All right, so I'll invite you to close your eyes or have a slightly downward gaze and take a few nourishing deep breaths. You may notice your breath in the rise and fall of your belly, of the rise and fall of your chest. And bring attention to your sit points, your touch points where your body maybe touching the chair or your feet, maybe touching the ground or your chair. Notice any areas of tension. Relax the muscles, your forehead. Relax the muscles around your eyes. Relax your jaw. Let your shoulders fall away from your ears. And let yourself feel any barriers that you have put up and any emotions that you've carried because you have not forgiven, not forgiven yourself, not forgiven others. And let yourself feel 
the pain of keeping your heart closed. Now bring to mind a time or a way you have hurt and harmed another, have betrayed or abandoned them, caused them suffering knowingly or unknowingly. out of pain, fear, anger, and confusion. Visualize the way you hurt this person. Feel the pain caused out of your own fear and confusion. Feel your own sorrow and regret. Sense that finally you can release this burden and ask for forgiveness and silently repeat the following phrases. May I be forgiven. May I be forgiven. May I be forgiven. You may find it helpful as you're able to place a hand on your belly or a hand on your heart or one hand on your belly or one hand on your heart. or visualize a hand on your belly or a hand on your heart. And say, may I be forgiven. May I be forgiven. Now bring to mind a time when you may have hurt yourself or harmed yourself. A time where you may have betrayed or abandoned yourself. Through your thoughts, words, or actions, knowingly or unknowingly.
And as you are able, feel your own precious body and life. And bring to mind this time that you may have hurt or harmed yourself. And picture this. Feel the sorrow you have carried from this and sense that you can release this burden. Extend forgiveness to yourself. And silently we repeat the following phrases. For the ways I have hurt myself. For the ways I have hurt myself. Through action or inaction. Through action or inaction. out of fear, pain, and confusion, out of fear, pain, and confusion. I now extend, I now extend a full and heartfelt forgiveness. a full and heartfelt forgiveness. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. There are many ways that you have been harmed by others, abused or abandoned, knowingly or unknowingly, in thought, word, or action. Now bring to mind a time or a way that someone has harmed you. Feel the sorrow you have carried from this past and sense that you can release this burden of pain by extending forgiveness when your heart is ready. And as you are able to release this burden, silently repeat the following phrases. 
I now remember. I now remember. The way another has hurt or harmed me. The way another has hurt or harmed me. Wounded me. Wounded me. Out of fear. Out of fear. Pain. Pain. Confusion. Confusion. And anger. And anger. I have carried this pain in my heart too long. I have carried this pain in my heart too long. To the extent that I am ready. To the extent that I am ready. I offer them forgiveness. I offer them forgiveness. To those who have caused me harm. To those who have caused me harm. I offer my forgiveness. I offer my forgiveness. I forgive you. I forgive you. And in the last few moments of this meditation, take a few more deep breaths. And when you're ready, come back to the room and open your eyes.